It was a mild evening when the glaring lights of the Orange Bowl burned down on Don Shula and his Miami Dolphins. Thirteen years earlier, Shula's Dolphins had gone 17-0. and And now this team could keep that record intact by knocking a 12-0 Chicago Bear team off the track. The Bears could bring a high price on the open market, but in Florida, Dolphin was a more popular entree. The Bears would have to contend with more than just the Dolphin team and the glare of the lights. They were under the glare and stare of more than 75,000 fans, the 10th largest Orange Bowl crowd ever. But record crowds and anti-Bear banners were of little importance. There was no getting around the fact that the Bears' defense was number one in the league against the rush and number three versus the pass. Tonight would be their true test against the legend before his time, Dan Marino. Surprising nobody in the stadium or the TV audience at home, Marino wasted little time. Marino, Matt Moore. Moore takes it in. Trailing 7 to nothing, the Bears' offense took the field. Number four quarterback Steve Fuller was filling in for an injured Jim McMahon. And he quickly retaliated with the Bears' version of lightning. Number 83, Willie Galt. Galt's world-class speed and 21-yard average per gain had Don Shula a bit uneasy. He knew his Dolphin defense was as vulnerable as a bowl of honey. And there was no hiding the league's 23rd-ranked defense. Steve Fuller was a journeyman in the NFL, but against the Dolphins, his roadmap was headed in the right direction as he tied the score at seven. Strange as it may seem, the Dolphins did run the ball, and number 22, Tony Nathan, was one reason. He carried 15 times for 74 of the Dolphins' 90 total rushing yards. However, the Dolphins gained most of their yardage through the air, and again, Nab Moore was in the picture. But on the goal line, there was no reason not to use one of the league's top 10 touchdown scorers. Ron Davenport's score was one of 11 rushing touchdowns all season. His windmill-like dance supplied the power to the usually lethargic Miami defense. During the season, they managed only 38 sacks, but Bear quarterbacks fell victims six times. The Bears, who finished the season third in sacks in the league, were not to be outdone and got to Marino on three different occasions. Dolphins could not afford to be grounded as 70% of their offensive production that year came through the air. The aerial show was an equation even better than Einstein could have thought of. M to M square. Marino to number 85, Mark Duper. And Marino to number 83, Mark Clayton. receivers combined for more than 100 receptions and over 1,600 yards. Quite often, Marino would get the ball there, like this 26-yarder to Clayton, and then leave the dirty dancing up to them. Someone once said, do it and do it again until they take it away. The Dolphins did just that as Davenport scored his second touchdown of the night. The Dolphins led 24-10, to 10, and though the skies were clear, Miami was beginning to rain on the Bears' parade. Much to the Bears' chagrin, somebody also said, when it rains, it pours. Not even 40 seconds elapsed when Maury Buford's punt was blocked and the Dolphins had a first and goal of the six. And coach Mike Ditka had an unwanted reason to raise his voice and his arm. Two plays later, Nat Moore reeled in his second touchdown of the half to make it 31-10. to 10. The Dolphins had scored on all five first-half possessions and were giving defensive coordinator Buddy Ryan fits. Despite starting the second half trailing by three touchdowns, Bear fans didn't care how dark the picture looked. Although it was hard to make out, they could still see 13-0. 
The Bears looked like a team that had gone without its porridge, and they came out very hungry in the second half. Richard Dent's fumble recovery served as a clear reminder of how quickly a Bear defense could put a stop to things. Soon after the offense bared down, Fuller's second touchdown of the night cut the lead to 14. Number 71, Mike Charles, and the rest of the Dolphin defense were playing over their heads. But it didn't matter what trick Chicago had in mind, the Dolphin, as always, was too smart. The Dolphin defense was to the bare offense like wire cutters on a telephone cable. There was no protection and no connection. If Chicago tried to reach out and call for help, no one answered. But the Bears kept climbing back, and number 95, Richard Densack, was one of his league-leading 17. For the Dolphins, it was a rare sight to see Marino on his seat, because in 1985, he was sacked only 19 times. But as always, Marino had the cool hand. It was as if he was directing traffic at the Fountain Blue Hotel. But in fact, he was busy setting up number 85, Mark Duper, five times for 107 yards. In all, Marino completed 14 of 27 passes for 270 yards. When number 13 throws, his receivers move as predictably as a marionette in the hands of an expert. Talking about football and experts, the name Walter Payton can never go without mention. Entering the game, he had rushed for 100 yards or more seven consecutive times. And against the Dolphins, he made it eight straight. 23 carries, 121 yards. The eight 100-yard games in a row set an NFL record. And for the third straight year, Peyton's combined rushing and receiving yardage eclipsed 2,000 yards. But the Bears needed more than Peyton. In reality, what they got was Satan, disguised as number 47, Glenn Blackwood. Fuller's second interception of the night was a result of forcing the ball into double coverage. Blackwood, the safety, was able to make the catch and keep both feet in bounds for one of his six interceptions in 1985. Marino went to work. Down the way. Into the arms of Clayton. If anybody before the game thought Miami had bitten off more than they could chew, they may have been right. But now they were just satisfying their palate. the Dolphins thought they were soaring to victory, but Dennis Gentry quickly brought them back to earth. Following his 50-yard kick return, the Bears played a little tag team. Number 29 Gentry was tapped out and Fuller tapped into Ken Marjoram to make it 38 to 24. But when Fuller went out with a twisted knee, the well was tapped dry for fill-in Jim McMahon. The Dolphin defense pushed through the Bears with the ease of going through a revolving door on somebody else's energy. A scoreless fourth quarter for both teams was ensured when McMahon's last Hail Mary didn't answer any prayers. Number 49, William Judson, added to an already spectacular night of a blocked punt and four tackles with his interception. With a victory in hand, Judson's teammates wasted little time in hoisting the flag. Not only had they beaten the Bears, they had won their fourth in a row and were tied for first in the AFC East. While the Bears were more than outwardly upset over their first loss, little did they know it would be their only loss. 
that they would more than make up for it with a 46 to 10 Super Bowl thrashing of the Patriots. The Dolphins went on to win their last three, making it seven in a row and finished 12 and four. They got as far as the AFC Championship before losing soundly to New England. For Coach Don Shula and the fans, the celebration was for more than just this win. The team and fans had upheld the past, while the scoreboard stated the present. 